Good morning, everyone. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord and are able, stand and we're going to begin our worship and song. Carol, I know you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. You're standing in your, inside you're standing. And you too, Glenda, I know.
I don't know if any of you remember George Beverly Shea, but he's the one that wrote that song. He was, for those that don't know, he was uh, a chief vocalist for Billy Graham and traveled around with Billy Graham and his crusades. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Almighty God, we pause to think of you, to remember all your blessings through this week, for your watchful care, for your healing touch, for that time that you sent someone by to say a comforting word at just the right time. We thank you, Lord, that you are behind all of those gestures. And now, Lord, we ask that you receive our worship today as we're gathered together as your body to praise you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated while I share a few announcements with you this morning. Um, <laughs> this Tuesday, I have a helper out there. This Tuesday will be at noon will be the uh, senior citizen potluck. So see Jenny. Jenny's not here today. So um, bring a dish to pass and a game to play and you'll be uh, guaranteed in. Um, this weekend also is the uh, ladies Kyrix weekend if any of you ladies are interested in that that will be running from Thursday to Sunday and I think they'll have a little something special for us Sunday during worship um, I want to remind you to sign up for the all church birthday party that's going to be the time when we celebrate everybody's birthday so nobody this year can say that no one remembered my birthday because we are remembering it and celebrating it on March 16th. So there's a sign-up sheet out back, and we do need you to sign up by the 3rd of March so we know how many to plan for. Um, and also, uh, happy to announce that the book club will be starting back up again March the 3rd for four weeks in room number eight, Gloria is going to be facilitating that, and the book that we will be studying is Teach Us to Pray, What We Can Learn from Scripture by Carla Sundberg. Uh, there's a $10 fee for the cost of the book, but if you can't manage that, come anyway. Um, and at this time, I would like to invite the ushers to come forward to receive our tithes and our offerings. Our scripture reading this morning is going to be very familiar to probably all of you. It's from the Gospel of John, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And I want you to read it along with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Amen. And uh, David's going to come and help lead this song. 
Let's stand together as we sing Reckless Love. Today we do praise you for that amazing love that Scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave. Jesus, we thank you for your amazing love, that you were willing to come and you died on the cross to pay the price for our sins. And Lord, I praise you for that today. And I thank you for the love that you show us each and every day, the blessings you surround us with. I thank you for the love that you place around us in our family and our friends, the strength that we gain from them. And Lord, I just pray that you will help us to be models of your love to the world around us. There are so many that are hurting, so many that are scared, so many that simply know, need to know that they're seen and they're heard. And Lord, I pray that you will help us to show your love to them so that they can know that your love is real. We ask this in your name. Amen.
one of the things that we're focusing on a little more on our church, in our church this year is our spiritual growth and spiritual aliveness, uh, drawing closer to God in any way that we can. And one of the things that we want to do is have a different focus for prayer each month. And um, January, we're starting with procrastination because it's February. But um, in February, what I would like us to do is focus on Curix this weekend, or uh, this month. For the last several weeks, we have been encouraging as many as possible to attend the Curix. And by the way, that is still an open possibility. There are sign-up uh, sheets, or well, the application forms. I'm not sure. Registration forms, there we go. On the table in Jewel Hall, and you are very welcome to fill them out, and we'd love to have you be able to come. Um, but I want to change the focus a little bit. I want to encourage you to be praying for the Curix weekends. Uh, the ladies' weekend, as you know, starts this Thursday, and it runs Thursday evening through Sunday afternoon. And if, if you haven't been here for, uh, during a Curix weekend before, it will not mess up our Sunday service at all. I, I think it enhances as Marilyn hinted, we usually get a special number or two by the, the Curix. Curix Chorus comes in and sings for us. Um, but the Curix will be down in the fellowship hall while we're in the rest of the church. So um, it will not change our services much at all, or just our Sunday school a little bit. Um, but it is a special time, and I would encourage you to be praying for especially the candidates, the, the people that are, are coming. And then also for the, the workers, that God will give them patience and wisdom and discernment. It is a very special time when the Spirit meets with us, and it is a great time for growth um, for the workers and the candidates alike. So if we could, let's, let's just take a quick moment now. Um, and actually, I, I've been debating this one off and on. I, I'm going to. Um, they don't know it. But if those who are going to be working the Curix weekend, I think we have three or four here right now. If you would come forward. Hmm? Men's and women's, yes. And I know Chris is going to be working it as well. Toby and Sue will be as well. Um, and a lot of you have never attended. You don't know what it's about or anything, but you do know what it means to have the Spirit flowing through the workers and helping and empowering them to reach people. As many as would be willing, I would invite you to come up and we're going to lay hands on the workers and commission them for their, their work this week. So if you would, in the next couple weeks... Lord, we do come to you right now. Lord, we thank you for the work that is going to be happening in our church over these next few weekends. And Lord, we thank you for the people that you have prepared, the, the candidates who are coming in a desire to draw closer to you. And I pray, Lord, that you will soften their hearts and help them be ready to hear from you and open to your spirit's leading. And Lord, I pray for the workers. I pray that you will give them your wisdom, your discernment, that they can speak the words that are needed, that they can show the actions of love that will speak into each other's lives and into the lives of these candidates. And Lord, I just pray that these couple weekends will be transformative events. Lives will be changed and your kingdom will be built. We ask this in your name. Amen. Thank you. Now, I'm sure that none of us would ever say that it happened with our own kids. But, you know, sometimes little kids pitch fits. Um, something that they want and they're not getting, so they yell and scream. And um, Quite often you'll hear the parents go, okay, use your words. Use your words. What do you want? 
Tell me what you want. But what do you do when you can't use your words? This week I was at the dentist's office. And the dentist, he's up there drilling and filling. And um, he's talking with the assistant, um, as they usually do, talking over your head back and forth. And I'm assuming part of that is to make the patient feel more relaxed. Um, you know, give you something to think of besides the fact that they have a power drill, albeit a little one, that they have a power drill inside your face, you know? And so they're, they're trying to give you to think of something to think about. And the assistant must live near the river because the doctor asked her, you know, is the river high now? That got my attention. A couple days before, we'd been um, on Old 131 and the just south of Rogers Heights, and the river was low. It really caught my attention how low it was just south of, or just down from the dam. And I thought, that doesn't seem right with all the snow runoff we've had. So it was a beautiful day that day. I went for a walk, went down by the river, had to look, and the river was high. And I thought, I'd like to be able to tell him, you know? But then my mind works strange ways. It's like, even if I had known the height of the river when they were talking. How could I have told them? You know, it's awful hard to talk to a dentist because they usually have their fingers in your mouth. You know, and you really don't want to move because you never know, you know, you really don't want that drill to go anywhere but where it's supposed to, you know? So this, the one time they don't say keep your mouth shut, they say keep your mouth open but keep it still. And so you try to do what you're supposed to, but how do you communicate? Even something as simple as the river is high. You know? And so I'm going, how could I do that without my words? And I thought, well, you know, if they say the river, you know, if they start talking about the river level, you, you know, they, they'd probably get the clue, but again, you're not supposed to move your head. Uh, you know, so how do you communicate when you can't use your words? And especially I, in the spring, I always expect it to flood because it does quite often. How would you show that it's flooding? You know? But anyway. How do, you commun how do you communicate without using your words? Coming up on Wednesday is Valentine's Day, and that's a time we talk a lot about love. Usually the emphasis on Valentine's is romantic love, and that can be included, but I'm thinking more of the broader definition of love, where it would involve our family and our friends and, and just other people that we know. How can we show love to them, and especially if we don't say it, how can we still tell them that we have love for them? In 1 John 3, John writes, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or, or tongue, but with actions and in truth. So John's saying that we know that Jesus loves us because of what he did. Jesus put his love into action, and he actually laid down his life for us. And then John says that we're also to be laying down our lives for others. And he could uh, be meaning that we're also, if some special need arises, that we would surrender our lives for another. That could be included. But I think he's talking more about being a living sacrifice, where it's not so much that we die for someone, but that we live for them. When we give of ourselves to help them and to serve them. I got to thinking along these lines by reading a, a book by C.S. Lewis. Um, I'm still just a little ways into it, rereading it. The Screwtape Letters. If you've ever read it, it's a fascinating book. Strange premise. The premise is um, these are letters from Screwtape. Screwtape is a demon supervisor. He's a head demon. And he's writing to a lower-ranking demon named Wormwood. Wormwood has been assigned to a new Christian. And Wormwood's job is to get this new Christian to pull away from God and go back to the devil. And so Screwtape is sending him the letters. This was written right around World War II, so they used letters. Um, giving him letters of advice 
And as we read it, we see some of the tools and the techniques that Satan uses and things that we should avoid and things that we need to be aware of. And in the third chapter, they start talking about family relationships, especially this new Christian's relationship with his mom. Apparently, um, I'm not sure if he lives with his mother or his mother lives with him. I'm not sure the dynamics there, but there, it's not a happy relationship. And so Screwtape is saying that what you need to do is make sure that you keep them on edge with each other. Never let it get smooth. Just keep those little jabs going. Just those little jabs. Every day, those little jabs. Let them get used to jabbing each other all the time. And he said, you can let this new Christian talk about God's love. It's okay. But make sure that he only thinks of it in intellectual or spiritual ways. He can talk about God's love. He can pray for her soul. But never let him act on any of that. Keep her real needs as divorced as possible from what he's thinking about. He can talk about God's love, but never let him actually fix dinner when she's really tired. He can talk about God's love, but never let him do the dishes when her arthritis is kicking up. He can talk about love, but never actually really picture loving, as he puts it, that sharp-tongued old lady sitting across the breakfast table. Because talk is cheap. But when we put our feelings into action, that can have a profound effect. When we start to show love to other people, not just talk about love, but when we start to show it, it can, it can impact those people. And it can be just simple things. The store, that's a great place to show love. It's a challenging place to show love. It's a great place to show love. I mean, let's just say you're heading up to the cashier, and there's actually an open cashier. You're going to get out quick. This is wonderful, right? This is what we pray for, right? Yeah, you're going to get out. And then you look the other way, and here comes somebody with as much stuff in their cart as you have in yours, which is a load. It's always a load, right? And they're aiming for the same cashier. What do you do? What if when you got up near there, you stopped, smiled at them, and said, oh, go ahead. You're going to have to wait. But that's a simple, simple way to show kindness and love. And if you do that, chances are it will have an impact on them. They will probably respond at least by smiling, usually by saying thank you, something like that. They may say things about you, and it will probably be uh, favorable things. This is good. The problem is the same thing happens in reverse if when you see them coming, you pick up your pace, you know, so you can get there just in front of them, cut in, and ha, ha, made it. You will probably hear them talking about you again. It won't be nearly as favorable this time. And when they accidentally bump you with their cart, and then they go, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, it's hard to believe how sincere they are because they got such a big grin as you're rubbing your ankle, you know. And... Our actions, our feelings put into action, have an impact on the people around us. But the impact that we can count on is the impact in, in us. When we put our feelings into action, our feelings become stronger. When we put our feelings of love into action, do loving action, it makes our feelings stronger, and we feel closer to that person. We usually feel better about ourselves as well. And it can be just the simple things. It can be as simple as picking up the dirty socks that are on the floor. And if you can actually do that in love, thinking as you're doing it, Maybe their, their, their back is giving them grief. They're having trouble reaching over or something like that. Maybe they were in a huge rush this time. And as you're picking it up, you just go, you're thinking, I'm glad I can help them. If you can actually do it with a sincere smile on your face, 
you will feel closer to them. You'll probably feel better about yourself because you're putting love into action. Now, the, the problem with the fact, I think it's a fact, that when we put our feelings into action, the feelings get stronger. The problem is our negative feelings get stronger too. And if you're picking up those dirty socks just because they are too lazy of a slob to bend over and take 10 seconds to pick them up, and so we pick them up and we throw them into the hamper, that's love in action, right? No, it's the same action. It does not give the same feeling. And it does not make us closer to the person who will tend to drive us farther away. Whatever, act, whatever feeling we are acting on will get stronger. We feed that feeling. But when we can take a loving feeling and match it with a loving action, positive things can happen. And it doesn't have to be big things. It can be just the little things. It can be taking our, our dishes to the sink. It can be picking up our own dirty socks before somebody else has to worry about them. You know, it, simple things. I plan on talking uh, with the kids on this same topic on Wednesday. And I'm going to talk with them about oh, being obedient to your parents, you know, and to the teacher. The first time they call, the first time your mom calls, responding. You know, because... If you wait until the mother has to use the full name, you're in trouble, right? I mean, for me, if they call Mark, if I come, I'm fine. If I wait for Mark Allen, I'm in trouble. If you ever get up to Mark Allen Bullock, <clears throat> time to run. <laughs> One way or the other, you know, if you run far enough away, they'll feel good about you by the time they find you. At least they'll be glad they're still, you're still alive. So they can kill you. You know, but it's a <laughs> love in action is coming back the first time. And as adults, love isn't so much obedience. Love is listening. Love is responding the first time. Love is letting them have their way at times as well. It doesn't have to be the big things. We don't have to have great abilities to do it. In a devotional book that I've been uh, reading, this lady was telling back when COVID was really bad and she was really stressed out because a close family member was, had been taken into the hospital and into ICU and the day before they'd been put on a ventilator. And she was talking to her adult daughter about this and, and kind of venting to her about how she felt so helpless and there's nothing you could do, you know? I mean, the patient was hours away, but even if she could go there, they wouldn't let you in. Remember those good old days? And she's just, there's nothing I can do. And you know, she's just feeling lost. And she said she didn't know that her two-year-old granddaughter was also listening until her little granddaughter came up and slid her little hand into Grandma's and said, it's okay, Grandma. Don't worry. I'm here. Now, that's just love in action. Think of how many times that little girl, when she was freaking out, when mom or grandma would take her hand and say, it's okay, I'm here. Now she's returning the love. It, so many ways we can do it. Simple things that we can do it. Giving of our time. Giving of our energy. A good example I've seen lately, um, Cody and Chelsea are clearing some uh, property for, uh, for their home. And right back in the woods, they, they're cutting out this beautiful area. I had no idea how many trees were in the, pla the size of a yard's area until every single tree has to be cut down, cut up, and hauled away. There's a lot of trees there. And 
Cindy and I go down, we help when we can. We're parents, that's what we're supposed to do. You know, that's in the job description. But what I've been so, I've enjoyed watching is watching when aunts and uncles and cousins and grandpas and just show up and help. None of us are lumberjacks. We usually pay the price for it the next day. You know, about the time you bend over to try to touch your, you know, tie your shoelaces and your back sues you for breach of contract, you know. And it, some would say it's a good workout. I think it's love and action. And I'm so proud of my family and glad to see them working together that way. I just think that is so cool. When we put our love into action, because whatever feeling we act on, it gets stronger. We had a poor example of that last night. Um, last night, Cindy and I were coming up from downstate, and we had about a three and a half hour trip in front of us. I was in a bad mood to start because we were getting a later start, and it's just, oh, this is frustrating. And we're going along, we're south of Jackson, if anybody's familiar, south of Jackson on 127 there. And they've got a long, straight stretch with no passing zones. It is so frustrating. And right smack dab in the middle of it, there's a stoplight. I had finally gotten in front of the other cars. The road was clear in front of me. We were coming up to the stoplight, and we were timing it right. I mean, I act like we did something about it. It's just the way it worked. But yeah, we were going to cruise through on green. And this wahoo came shooting up from the right. He stopped at the stoplight and pulled out in front of me. I was ticked. I was in a bad mood to start with, and this guy pulled in front of me and slowed me down. Didn't he know I had three hours yet to go? And so I showed great Christian love. I did not honk my horn. I wanted to. I, real, I had my hand up. I did not honk the horn. I was proud of myself. Instead, I got right on his butt, got as close as I could, and just riding along, just waiting for the next passing zone. And I'm fuming inside. Cindy knows me well. She didn't say much of anything at this point. And this little voice said, how are you doing at showing Christian love? I thought, this is brilliant, isn't it? The guy did the same thing that I've done countless times without meaning to. He pulled out, he went slower, he held me up. This is going to cost me, you know, 60 seconds, maybe two or three minutes. And I'm riding his bumper close enough that if he hit the brakes, I might hit him just because I'm ticked. But as long as I stayed close, I stayed angry. God started talking to me. My foot came off the accelerator a little bit, got at least the two seconds between, and I wasn't near as mad. Whatever feeling we have, if we act on it, it becomes stronger. Negative feelings, yes. But the good thing, the positive feelings as well, the love that we can share bit of a disclaimer. We've been looking in 2 Peter, and 2 Peter, um, in the second letter, Peter's been talking about false teachers and warning us about the false teachers who will come and twist the scripture to fit the occasion that they have in mind. And he said to watch out for those false teachers, and we've been warning you, watch out for false teachers. Today I'm going to take a little scripture and twist it. Um, from the book of James, James writes extensively about faith, but then he says we have to put our faith into action. And he says, faith without works is dead. And as I was thinking through this, I thought, you know, 
It is so true if we put love in place of faith. And I thought, it's still true, and I believe it's true. But the disclaimer, this is not scripture. This is my interpretation. I'm pretty sure it's right. But it is just my interpretation. But love by itself, if it's not accompanied by actions, is dead. Show me your love without deeds, and I will show you my love by what I do. You see, Abram's love and his actions were working together, and his love was made complete by what he did. Love without deeds is dead. Abram's love was made complete by what he did. We can say we love our family members, but if we won't help them, if we won't encourage them, our words don't mean much. We can say we love them, but if we cut them down and tear them down, our words don't mean much. We can say we love them, but if we yell and fight, our words don't mean much. Love without action is dead. How do we know that Jesus loved us? He gave his life for us. How will people know that we love them? It's when we give of ourselves to them. Valentine's is coming. How are you going to let the people know that you love them? Let's stand together for prayer. Dear Lord, I do thank you for your amazing love to us. I thank you that throughout history you have reached out to your people. I thank you that on the cross you paid the price for our sins. And I thank you for the way that you minister to us each and every day. Lord, I pray that you will help us to show that love to the people around us. Help us to, help us to show you to them. We ask this in your name. Amen. of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen.
morning, everyone. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord.